Okay, I want to add a, another level of complexity to our database here. I currently have my two tables. I've got an employees table and I've got a jobs table. Uh, employees keep track of the various employees, clearly their name, their pay rate, their email address. And the jobs tables keeping track of details about a particular job. What date did they go? How many hours did they work it? And things like that. But there's a lot of other things I'd like to keep track of too about a particular job. For instance, what company was the job for? What is the address of that company? Um, who was the main contact person? And so forth. Now for something like that, I'm going to bring in a third table. And I'm going to create a table that's simply just going to keep track of the various customers or you know companies that my company works for. And just as a reminder here, imagine my company takes its employees and sends them out on various kinds of jobs. It could be programming or database administration or things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and close my relationships window. I've got a jobs table open. Let me go and close that for a moment. And I'm going to create a new table. I'll just create a table in design view here. Create tab, table design. And I'm going to go ahead and put in um, customer ID, or we could even call it client. That makes, sounds a little better. Client ID. I'll do uh, auto number for that. Client name client contact and of course we could have things like client address and whatnot um, I'll go ahead and do a client phone also text data type client ID will be the primary key there we go and let me jump over to datasheet view after saving this yes I'll call it my clients table and I'm just gonna enter in some basic data from uh, data sheet view. Now of course we just looked at the very end of that last video I could easily create a form for this table and that might be a nice slick way so let me try that. I'll close this table. My clients table is active. I'll go to create and I'm just gonna go right over to form. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with form design. Okay now this is particular layout view so in the top left I'll change my view button for this form over to uh, form view. So now I've got a form for my clients, and I can make up a number of different clients. Let's see, I'll go ahead and put in a Ralph Co. There we go, there's one. Let me put in a few others here. There we go. So I've created four records, four clients. Each of my clients is a particular business, and I've got uh, a contact person, I've got a phone number, and of course in real life I might also have some addresses, fax numbers, uh, email addresses, and things like that. Okay, so now I've got this table set up. Yes, I'll save changes. Oh, this is my form here, so I'm saving my form. I have a client's form. So I have a client's table and a client's form, jobs table and a jobs form, and of course I have my original employees table. Now, I'm going to go to my jobs table now, and I'm going to enhance it a bit by adding some new fields. I'm going to add, make this a little bit more realistic. For instance, I will jump over to design view, okay, and I want to show you something here. Right now I've got, uh, of course, job ID, the particular job name they go on. I'm going to change job name though, and instead of job name I'm gonna keep track of client ID now this is gonna cause me some short-term issues but it's gonna be a long-term solution basically when I create a new job it's gonna be matching up a particular company client with a particular employee so a particular job will have a client ID involved and it's also gonna have an employee ID involved now when I just created my um, clients table remember this, my clients table here, client ID was an auto number data type. Later on when you relate tables together by a common field you need to remember that they share the same data type. Now an auto number doesn't match up with another auto number, it actually matches up with a number data type. So on my jobs table for client ID I'm gonna make this data type number. Okay, that's really important. Now when I go to save this, it's not going to like it because I would already entered in some text here and that's going to need to be replaced. So I'll be prepared for an error message when I save. Some data may be lost. It's, it actually is giving me an error message here. Um, do I want to proceed anyway? Yes, I do. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So my jobs table has been modified so that there's now it's now going to request a client ID as well as an employee ID. Now here's something else I'm going to do. I'm actually going to get rid of the job hours. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to delete that particular field and the data associated with that field will also get deleted. Putting something like job hours isn't as realistic as it could as it could be. Instead what I'd like to do in addition to listing the job date I'd like to list the start time and the end time and if I have the start time and the end time for a particular job then later on I can calculate the number of hours for the job just by subtracting one from the other. So I'm gonna have job start time as a date time field and I'm going to have job end time as a date time field. And I'll save that. And now I'm going to jump over to data sheet view for a moment and just kind of look over my new pieces of information. Now remember we did a lookup wizard before for employee ID. That's why I get that nice little drop down menu for employee ID when I want to enter a new particular employee. I don't have that for my client ID, although I could. So you, if you wanted to do that for client ID, you could review that other video. So for now, for client ID, I'm just going to put in various client names. I'll put in client 1, 2, and 2, client 3, and 4, 2, 1, and we'll do a 4 again. Okay, so notice I've mixed in some various clients. So what this really means is that on October 1st, employee Carla worked with client ID 1. I believe I did that for Ralph. I could go to my clients and say, okay, well, client 1, there it is. Now you might start to think that, wow, this doesn't seem very user-friendly. User well, you got to remember, Datasheet View, even though we can use it quite a bit for looking through our data, Datasheet View is really not where a person is going to be spending most of their time looking over data. That's what reports are for. So yes, I could go through and do that lookup wizard, but I'm going to leave it just how it is now. Each individual job has a particular client involved and a particular employee involved. And the reason we needed this third table, okay, the third table was a separate table for clients, is because clients and employees have what's called a many to many relationship. One employee can work with many clients, and one client can work with many employees. And we certainly see that here. One client working with many employees. Brent is working with client three and four. And of course, client four, or client. Uh, two is being worked on by Carla and Ayla. This many-to-many -many relationship is getting resolved by our jobs table. Now this is also going to require some modification to my um, relationships window. So let me jump over to database tools. Actually before I do that let me go ahead and close these tables that I have open. Go to database tools and relationships and I'm going to go ahead and break this relationship for a moment. I'm going to show tables and I'm going to bring in my new table. So let's see, I've got employee and jobs, let me bring in clients. Okay. Now, where their position really doesn't matter, but I like the fact that jobs is in between the employees and the clients. One employee can work with many clients, one client can be worked, can be serviced by many employees. The jobs is where we keep track of that. When you're creating the relationships, you're looking for common fields. They don't always have the same field name, but often they do. Employee ID to employee ID. Enforce referential integrity. Create. There's a one to many relationship between employees and jobs by the employee ID. Similarly, client ID from the clients table to client ID from the, jo to the jobs table. Enforce referential integrity. Create. One to many. So when you have a many to many relationship like we do with employees and clients, the best way to resolve that is to break it down into multiple one to many relationships. And the jobs table takes care of that. And this scenario comes up a lot. For instance, one patron can check out many books at a library, one library book can be checked out by many patrons. So that's a many to many relationship. And what you might have is a third table in the middle also called an associative entity, that would keep track of which patron ID checked out which book ID on which date, that kind of thing. Same thing for students. One student can take many classes, and one class can be take, taken by many students. That's a many-to-many -many relationship. And the table in the middle might be, you know, would be used to keep track of, for instance, grades. 
a particular student ID, a particular course ID, and a grade for that student in that particular course. So it happens a lot in databases. Now that we've got our three table database set up, some of the next things that we're going to look at is how that we can use reports to look at some of the data in here. 